When people tell you the inspirational story of Bill Gates, when they tell you how talented and hardworking Bill Gates is, you really can't doubt his talent or hard work. But a part of his story is never told to the people. Had you been in Bill Gates' place, and even if you were equally talented and hardworking as Bill Gates, you still would not have achieved what he has. Why am I saying this? Come let's know dark secret of Bill Gates in this video. So, you're the wealthiest man in the world for 20 years or more. Microsoft hit a new record high on Wall Street. They'll do whatever he can to uh, capture more of the market. You were like the youngest person to become a billionaire. Is that right? Pretty, yeah, yeah, in terms of my own earning it. Welcome back own. once again to Enigma Epics video. Seattle, Washington, 1967. An eighth grader, Bill, gets a hold of a computer. This wasn't a computer like the ones we're familiar with. It was the teletype model 33 ASR of the time, connected through phone lines to the computers of the General Electric Company. But this surprised young Bill, the possibilities of the computer. Bill started spending hours trying to figure out the computer. He developed his first program on the computer. Fast forwarding to some years later, Bill Gates became the richest man in the world. He remained the richest person for about 20 years. Today, he's the fourth richest, with a wealth of $124 billion. Let's start at the beginning. At 12 years old, Bill Gates was studying at Lakeside School, a private school in Seattle. At school, he had some friends who were equally passionate about computers. Kent Evans, Bill Gates' first best friend, Paul Allen, a 10th grader, and Rick Wyland. The four of them started the Lakeside Programmers Group. He tried to come up with ways to use the computer outside school, too. In Seattle, there was a small company called Computer Center Corporation. They rented out computers by the hour. A year later, in 1968, Bill and his friends started visiting this store to use the computers. But the cost to do this was quite high. This store charged $40 to use a computer for an hour. So Bill and his friends started looking for bugs in the operating system of CCC. They found the loopholes in the computer system and tried to exploit those for more computer time. When they were caught, they were banned by the store. But next summer, this small company thought of using these kids to look for bugs in the system. They said that they could use the computers for free if they kept on identifying the problems in the system. Here, Bill Gates learnt several programming languages, Fortran, Lisp, but soon, this small store went out of business. Again, these kids were left with no means to access computers. Then they found a company in Portland called Information Sciences Inc. This company allowed them to use their computers for free too, as long as they wrote a program for the company. It was a payroll program. It helped them learn more about taxes and payrolls. By then, their school had recognized their talents and so in 1971, Bill Gates and his best friend, Kent Evans, were told to write a program for the school. They had to make class schedules on the program. They worked hard on the program, but on a weekend, Kent Evans went on a holiday to the hills, and unfortunately, he died after falling off of a cliff. This accident shocked Bill, but he didn't stop working. He continued working with his other friend, Paul Allen. He was in college by then. In 1972, Bill Gates and Paul Allen founded their first company, Traff Odata. They were interested in technology and business both. They wanted to develop a program that could process the traffic on the roads so that they could sell it to the traffic department. Though they worked hard on it, it didn't turn out very successful. The next year, in 1973, Bill Gates graduated from high school. He takes the SAT and scores exceedingly well, 1590 out of 1600. With this, he gets admission to Harvard, one of the best universities in America. By then, Paul was quite bored of attending classes at the university, so he moved to Boston and started working with Honeywell Corporation. He advised Bill to start working with him at Honeywell. So in 1974, both were working for Honeywell Corporation. One day, while Paul was going somewhere, he came across a magazine stall, which carried the magazine Popular Electronics. The picture on the front page of the magazine was of Altair 8800, the first personal computer in the world. It had the Intel 8080 processor. Paul bought the magazine and ran to show it to Bill Gates. Paul was trying to tell Bill Gates for quite some time that the size of the computer chips was getting exponentially smaller, while their speed and power were exponentially increasing. 
and it was only a matter of time before a computer was built that was so small that it could be used as a personal computer. There was a live example on the front page of the magazine. Someone had built the computer before Bill Gates and Paul. The company that made this computer was MITS. Paul and Bill called up the company and told them that the two of them would like to write software for them. The most popular programming language at the time was BASIC, so they wanted to write software for the computer in BASIC. Paul had to relocate to another city, while Bill dropped out from Harvard. They built a BASIC version and sold it to Altair. The company was so pleased with the work that they offered a job to Paul, but by then, Paul was running his consultancy, Microsoft. It was later renamed to one word, Microsoft. They had several contracts from Texas Instruments, a Japanese company, but Microsoft got its first big break when they provided DOS operating system for IBM computers. In the meanwhile, the team of Microsoft was working on a new operating system. In November 1983, they announced their new operating system, Windows 1.0, though it was officially launched later in 1985. Next year, in March 1986, Microsoft launched their IPO, with Goldman Sachs as their book-running manager. The IPO price was set at $21 share, and after the first day of trading, their share price had reached $28, and they never had to look back since. Microsoft went on to be extremely successful. Windows 98 was launched. As we all know, their software reached all nooks and crannies in the world. Their computers were astoundingly successful. You might find this story very inspirational. A super intelligent boy who's passionate about something works hard on it, thinks out of the box, and even drops out of his college to pursue his dream, builds a company that gets immensely successful. This boy becomes the richest man in the world. Isn't it a motivational story? An inspirational story? If Bill Gates could do it, why can't you? But friends, as I told you at the beginning of the video, there's a twist in our story. What is it? It is the twist of privilege. How privileged was Bill Gates? Let me explain what I mean in points. As you'll understand, you find that had you been in Bill Gates' place and were as talented and hardworking as Bill Gates, even then, you couldn't have been as successful as him. Why? Come, let's see. First, had Bill Gates been a woman, it wouldn't have been possible. Because during the 1960s, there was significant gender discrimination in the USA. Did you know that in the 1960s, a bank could refuse to give a credit card to a woman? Even if the woman was married, her husband's signature was needed. In many states of the US, women couldn't serve on the jury. In 1961, the Supreme Court of the US upheld a Floridian law preventing women from serving on the jury. Women weren't allowed to take birth control pills it was allowed only after the historic judgment in the U.S. in 1972. 1963's Kennedy's Commission on the Status of Women stated that for every dollar that a man earns, if a woman does the same job and the same work, she earns 59 cents. It was in 1964 the U.S. passed a law preventing gender discrimination against women. Women weren't even allowed to enter Harvard's library till 1967. Till 1977, the male-to-female ratio was at 4-1. Women had to be four times as smart as men to get admission to the same university. Harvard had a sister school for women, Radcliffe College. It didn't give the female students the same privileges that the male students got. It was shut down only in 1999, and a common Harvard school was set up where male and female students could get admission without any discrimination. Second, had Bill Gates been black, it wouldn't have been possible. Because the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964, before this, the blacks weren't allowed to enter in restaurants, cinema halls, churches or schools. Even in buses, they had to sit in designated corner while the buses used to be reserved for the whites. People of color weren't even allowed to vote in several southern states. In 1968, when Bill Gates and Paul Allen were working on their computers in the Computer Center Corporation, Martin Luther King was assassinated because he was fighting for the rights of the people of color. Throughout the 1960s, there were several riots for black rights over racial discrimination. Third, had Bill Gates been born in some other country or even in another U.S. city, it might not have been possible. Bill and Paul lived in a developed country, a developed city, in a developed country. But even if we talk about America, Seattle was an advanced city for computers. Computer technology reached this city in the 1960s. The programming language BASIC was invented in this city. 
the computer that Bill and Paul were using at the CCC store, was one of the first commercial systems to be available in the country. Because not everyone living in Seattle had an access to computers. Bill and Paul both were studying at a top-notch private school. The middle-class people couldn't send their kids to the lakeside school. Not only were they getting a good quality education at the school, but they were also getting access to the computers. When Bill Gates experienced computers for the first time in 1965, there were only about 22,000 computers all across America, while the population of America was 200 million. Fifth, the influence of parents. Paul Allen's father, Ken, he was the associate director at the library of the University of Washington. Because of this, Paul could access the books on computers. Bill Gates' parents were also on the governing body of the university. When the CCC store went bankrupt, Paul and Bill went to their parents for help, and they got access to the university's graduate computing center at Roberts Hall. There they worked with various computers. It was here that they saw the first computer game of their lives. It isn't a criticism. Any parent would want to help their kids in any way possible. So Paul and Bill got their parents' help, an advantage. Later in his life, Paul built a library and a computer center and named the library after his father for this reason. Bill Gates, too, got an advantage of his father's profession. Bill Gates' father was a lawyer, officially registering Microsoft, renting a space, hiring people, fighting legal battles against Altair. These would have been very difficult for a common man. But because his father was a lawyer, Bill Gates could get a lot of legal help from his father. On a related note, not everyone can afford to drop out of college. Bill and Paul could afford this because they had their family's wealth as a reserve. There's another man in our story, Monty Davidoff. When Paul and Bill were working on Altair's basic software, a crucial part of the software was written by Monty. But when Paul and Bill offered Monty a permanent job at Microsoft, Monty refused to drop out of college. He said that his father had a small hardware store, so he couldn't afford to take such a big risk. He had to get a college degree. And thus, it is a very important point. Not everyone can afford to drop out of college. Next point, a major turning for Microsoft was when they got a contract from IBM. Till then, Microsoft was a small company. But how did they get this contract? The chairperson of IBM at the time was John Opel. He was also a board member of a non-profit organization, United Way. A co-member of the board of this organization was Mary Maxwell Gates, Bill Gates' mother. She talked to Opel about Microsoft. As Microsoft's competition, there was a big company called Digital Research. It was much bigger than Microsoft. IBM wasn't able to negotiate properly with it. So when Mary suggested Microsoft, IBM's chairman, decided to give a chance to Microsoft. This chance that Microsoft got was immensely important. They may not have gotten this chance if Mary Gates was on the same board. When Microsoft entered into a contract with IBM, Microsoft didn't even have any software to sell. There was another company called Seattle Computer Products that had a QDOS operating system. Paul bought this QDOS operating system and gave it to IBM. It wasn't the exact copy, they made some modifications to it. I hope you will like and share this video of Enigma Epics, and don't forget to subscribe our channel.